Thank you for joining us again for another episode of AJ and 8. Last week we talked a little bit about DURs and distributed energy resources and we mentioned the other DUR which is demand response and that's kind of where I'd like to take our conversation today to, is to talk a little bit more about demand response. It's it's something that's been around for quite some time. You know, demand response has actually been around since I think it was the late 1970s when the Bonneville Power Administration, you know, which is part of the Department of Energy that, you know, I think that's where they were working on projects involving demand response. And, you know, since then, there's been a lot of opportunity for demand response to grow. <clears throat> Recently, a lot of people have been talking about demand response, especially as the grid is transforming. So a lot of customers have come to us saying, hey, you know, we, we hear about this new program and this and that. And um, as a demand response aggregator, it's been really interesting to to help businesses and homeowners see the opportunities that demand and response gives. So just kind of to touch a little bit about demand and response. So demand and response in and of itself is whenever the grid is being utilized too much. So let's say in the middle of summer, you know, July at three o'clock in the afternoon when everybody's AC is on, just there's so much people using power and the utility cannot supply enough power. So they have demand and response customers who have signed up to say, hey, if you need power, let me know and I will go ahead and reduce or shut off equipment. In return, you're going to pay me for it. So let's say if I've got, you know, 15 package units, HVAC systems up on my roof and I don't need all of them on, maybe I'll shut off a couple of them. Or if I got, you know, 10 elevators, maybe I'll shut off four of them. So if I'm willing to shut off power to reduce my power usage or curtail, they are willing to pay me for that at a premium, right? So it becomes a really good tool for businesses and homeowners to use just for being conservative and, and being, you know, really mindful of the opportunities to, to help out and reduce. Okay. So the, so it's all fine and dandy. It sounds great until it's the middle of summer at 110 degrees in California and you got to shut off your AC. And that's what we noticed is while we're talking to these customers, you know, we found a lot of customers opting out. You know, I had one of our customers, I'm like, buddy, you keep opting out of these, these events. I mean, how are you ever going to get paid? And he's like, AJ, when I've got engineers that I'm paying $150 an hour to work and I see sweat coming down, I'm getting out. I cannot have my employees being uncomfortable. So, so that's been the challenge is, you know, the utilities offer a good value. They offer something good. But the problem is in and of itself, demand response is painful. Like it hurts. Like I said, I mean, imagine if you're at home, if you're at home in your house and it's 110 degrees, if you haven't been in it, let me tell you, it just absolutely sucks, especially coming from Hawaii. Right. I mean, for us Hawaiians, it's, you know, 72 to 78 degrees. Anything colder than that, we're doubling up the blankets. Anything hotter than that, we just think we're in hell. OK, so we just don't understand how it is until you're there. And then to have them say, hey, we need you to shut off lights. We need you to shut off ACs. Right. It just it becomes very upsetting. So the thing that we need to look at is are there ways for us to curtail or reduce energy without it impacting our operations and that's been you know the big you know puzzle out there is how can we get more people to sign up how can we get more people to curtail and you know for for one of the companies that i worked with you know we we approached the demand response completely different you know we actually used the microgrid uh, to island the building whenever a demand response was called. So it was unique. It was definitely um, progressive. The utilities loved it. We gave them predictable power. We gave them a lot more power available and we didn't disrupt operations on our customers' facilities. So it was really a good opportunity for us to set ourselves apart. Uh, another thing that recently started happening was they actually, you know, Pacific Gas and Electric, you know, they, put together what is known as an excess supply demand response. So 
we're talking about traditional demand response is when too many people are using energy, they actually pay you to reduce, to curtail, to shut off things, okay? Um, excess supply demand response was innovative. And what they did was they said, you know, uh, in California, we have so many solar systems in place, whether it be on residential or commercial or utility scale. So there are times where we're actually producing too much energy. So unfortunate, fortunately and unfortunately in California, there are times where we're producing too much energy. So now we're actually having to pay other states to take our excess power. Okay. It's crazy, right? So, um, so when we're looking at this, PG&E said, you know, why don't we go ahead and pay our customers to turn on equipment? Really smart idea. You know, so again, it, it creates an opportunity for us to, to earn revenue if we have the flexibility. But again, if we have a microgrid, we can go ahead and use our system as a way to help curtail, instead of curtailing and shutting things off, utilizing the power in our batteries and then vice versa, you know. So it, it really creates a lot more flexibility for the customer as well as for the utility by having a microgrid in place to be able to support this type of you know, DER scenario, this demand response scenario. And, you know, along those lines, I think that's where for us, when we, when we come together to create this demand response opportunity to support the utilities and, and allow this to be a customer centric model, right? So we're looking at doing a pilot in Hawaii with uh, one of our partners out there, and we're going to be integrating one of our intelligent smart circuit breakers and this will give us the ability to to use our intelligent circuit breaker to be able to reduce loads just by sending a command now traditionally in california by sending a command that means that they're going to shut off my ac but if we have an intelligent circuit panel that can actually reduce loads based on priorities you know one meaning it has to stay on five means you know it's my coffee maker, so I don't care if you shut it off. So imagine if my circuit panel is knows that I need to go ahead and reduce 10%, so I shut off all non-essential things. Everything that is priority five, I'll go ahead and shut it off. Now it'll go ahead and suffice the 10% reduction and I can get paid on it and I may not even have to shut off my AC. That's the types of things that we're working on and I think that's where the environment is going. So, you know, Stay tuned. Understand a little bit more about demand response and how it can be a tool in your energy needs and your use and definitely as a way to start earning revenue on your microgrid. Thank you so much. I hope to see you next week again for another episode of AJ&E. Aloha.